this video demonstration and uh, training session, we are going to bring all of our work with the data uh, up to the final presentation point uh, that we've been working towards uh, throughout the last previous training sessions. So you'll, uh, just as an overview of what we're doing, we started with a form that looks like something like this. And then from there, we extracted the data and populated this spreadsheet, which is a live uh, spreadsheet of the data. And then we took this data and we created pivot table, as you see here. And from this pivot table, we used uh, manipulated the data and the variables that came in. And then we created visuals uh, from this data, as you see uh, back in the session four and five, training sessions four and five. And then we, of course, added a count version of this uh, and a count version of the graph, as you see here. Uh, this, not this one, as you see here with the class number of responses. Uh, now this was for just 21 rows, the first 21 rows. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to get this data and this visual into a presentation, a Google Slides presentation. Uh, so you'll have a, uh, your own copy of this if you're conducting the training session. And you can see that it's already pre-formatted with several uh, lines of, of directions. So you'll want to access this to understand uh, how to proceed uh, with this training resource along with the video. All right, so uh, let's just take a look at the first question that we're gonna try to answer with our data, and that is how many submissions are collected for each grade level with a selected range of data? All right, so on here, like I said, we have a range of data uh, from basically uh, B1 to B22. Now you can see that if you open up your chart editor, ed edit chart and under setup, you can see data range and it says B1 to B21. Now our data goes all the way down to 551 or 550 lines, uh, rows that is. So what we want to do is just come up here and say 551, keep all things the same. We'll hit, hit enter on that. And let's go back up to our chart and here we have the new numbers for the new range. And so it automatically reads the, those, uh, that new range and it adjusts the numbers as you see here, okay? Uh, so uh, this is our data collection, the times that we've collected uh, the entry submissions uh, upon class entry for each grade level for our data ranges. All right, so this now uh, obviously is our, uh, our chart that we wanna put in there. And so let's go ahead and you simply come here and we hit uh, copy the chart. So you click on the three dots, copy the chart. You come into our slide four here where it says place data visualization. And we can just take this out if we want and just leave the red box and then we can paste. You want to make sure it's linked to the spreadsheet. Uh, that, that allows you to collect all of the data as it comes in in real time, and you'll see how that works with the uh, visual. So I'm just gonna hit paste link to spreadsheet, and you can see my, my uh, graph is here, that same graph that you see here. And now we can just sort of format this graph. And and we can just move it around and then we can type our answer or conclusion. So our answer was how many submissions are collected for each grade level uh, with a range of data. Uh, so we can easily type in, obviously here's our visual that answers the question quite, quite frankly. But if we were gonna ask who did the most or what conclusions can we draw from this, uh, we can say that grade six has the most submissions of the Google class form entry ticket over the past five 
weeks. Uh, so you can see that we have that there as well. And we could actually put the percentage or whatnot. So that's that's a, a conclusion we can draw. Uh, we could say the least, obviously grade nine. You can see there, but that's that's actually smaller class. So we have to take that variable into consideration as well. All right, so that's basically how you get a, a visual from our spreadsheets into our um, into our slide. Now let's go ahead and take uh, two more here. Uh, so we'll we'll do the next question. Uh, how does each class report their findings about belonging and othering upon entering class every class session? So um, let's take a look at how they do this. So we just come over here and now we're going to go to our pivot table tab that's already pre-made from, I believe, session uh, four and five training sessions. And we're going to simply do the same thing. We come here and we set a copy chart and let's go in here and again, you can just delete this if you want, and then we can just paste the chart, link to spreadsheet, okay. And here we go. All right, so this is how it would look. And again, you can draw your conclusions and uh, type them in here. Uh, and then this is, again, is comparing the grade level amongst itself here. And then we're gonna come over here to uh, the third question, and this is, comparing each class within each of the categories. Uh, and so that's our question. Uh, so uh, upon entering a stream class, every class session, how do the separate grade levels compare in relation to their feelings? So we're gonna compare the grade levels within these categories. And to do that again, we've already done it. It's over here. All we have to do is grab and copy that chart and then come over here. And again, I can just edit that out, paste the chart, link it to the spreadsheet and now the spreadsheet's linked to this data set all right now this is where the linking is very nice especially if you're dealing with real-time data that's coming in uh, as you go along throughout the school year or unit or of study or whatever you're studying uh, as far as data with students so we'll come back to the second of the three graphs and you can see that this information is a bit actually outdated compared to what we just said here. We're looking at all the classes here. So we wanna adjust this and we don't have to do a whole lot to adjust it. First, we're gonna come up here, uh, click into the pivot table, click edit. And you'll notice that we can then adjust the ranges again. So I'm gonna click on this little icon and I'm gonna say B1, all right? Uh, in fact, let's just say B and let's just say F we'll take all the all the rows in these columns and, okay. and now you can see that our data our graphic graphs change a bit and that's changing in real time based off of the visuals that you see here uh, connected to the data that's in the table now we've changed the table uh, and its ranges and what it reads. Now we just have to go in and change the graph. So we're, we're now collecting all submissions, all 550 submissions and analyzing it. And then we can just come in here and we'll go to the first graph. We'll say edit chart and this chart here. You can see our data range is actually only the first five rows. So we, we go from A1 to A5, which is actually cutting off our grade nine and 10. So we wanna make sure we adjust that. So to do that, we just come up here and we say E7. And that will add grade nine and 10 into our graph as such. And so now we have a graph that's pretty easy to read for all the grades that are in that whole data range that we changed in our pivot table. And obviously that's our uh, first graph there. And then we wanna come over to our second graph and in this graph, it's a little bit more complex, but basically the same thing. So when I click on the graph, it changes the gra chart editor. And back to E5, we wanna select E7, and we wanna hit enter. And you see not much changes there, because uh, this is slightly different because we switched the rows and the columns. So what we have to do is add the series that we want to show up. Right now, if I close this editor, you can see that we have only three grades, six, seven, and eight showing up. Uh, and that comes, correlates with row three, four, five, but we haven't added the series for six and seven to the chart. 
even though we changed the range. So we come back in here, hit edit chart, and now we add two more series, grade nine and grade 10. And now you can see that we have a chart that looks and appears like this. Now, you might get something like this, which is like the um, div and that kind of stuff, and you can adjust and make, make that different. Um, that's just something that it's, it's reading that maybe is irrelevant. Uh, you can see that it's coming out in this area here. Um, again, you can clean that up and play around with it. It just takes a little time. Uh, but now we have these two charts that have been updated, and the main purpose of doing this is just to show you that now we can go back to our, our uh, charts in our presentation slide deck and you can see that there's a little button now it's changed it says linked to chart options I click on it and it's reading that it has changed since the last time we viewed this so now we just go ahead and click update and now it updates to the view that we just adjusted on the spreadsheet side so then we come up here uh, we do the same thing we click here you'll see that when I do this we have many more classes that appear just like we do have here and so this is how we can go from collecting data here, analyzing and sifting and filtering uh, and using different types of aggregation functions with the vivid tables and also the graph uh, settings and configurations to the final presentation, which is in the Google Slides. And now we can obviously read the data in relation to the questions that we're trying to answer. And then we can use that data to the visualized data to support our, whatever conclusion we can draw from reading this data and we think is relevant for our audience. And that is the entire process of taking and collecting data via Google Form and presenting that data visually with possible conclusions and answers related to our context. Thanks for watching the video series. The next and final session will be a transfer opportunity uh, in our Google Classroom, an assignment where you can work with a whole lot of other data concerning our secondary students' digital health uh, responses uh, to study how our students at RISR and the secondary level are experiencing digital technology on a daily basis. Again, thanks for watching the training sessions. Have a great day. Have a great year.